Hey guys, how's it going? Today I thought I would do something a little different, giving you a front yard tour. It's gonna be some of the things that have been growing out here through uh, from summer, finishing up, and then we'll take you to see some of the things that are in the patio section. So starting out, I wanna show you guys the yacon. This is the yacon that's growing in this really huge pot that you guys have seen one of my previous episodes of planting these in containers. And you can see that they're they have not flowered yet, but they are still looking really great. The cold is actually coming in a couple of days, so I think it's going to finish up pretty soon. So stay tuned for a harvest video. So the yukon is just so delicious. One of my, actually is like the most favorite uh, tuber um, root vegetable for me to eat. It tastes so good that it almost tastes like a fruit to me. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to these. And then behind that, you can see that the sunchokes are all dying back. These are some special varieties that have grown. They're all different types of varieties that I look forward to harvesting with you guys. Some of you guys were asking me what variety this mulberry tree is, and I actually don't know because it was given by one of my mom's friends. It was a, a propagated, you know, tree that we started with just a, a, about a foot or a foot and a half tall. And I really love that it grows quite a, actually fruits quite a few times throughout the year and you guys have seen I'm sure in quite a few episodes here. I really enjoy that there's a lot of fruits here but sometimes when the fruits come in a cooler season the weather is not warm enough to sweeten them up. However, I still enjoy to juice so much of that deep red pigment that I can you know, still benefit from. And another thing is I really like that mulberry leaves are really great uh, for tea and to just use as mulch. They grow super fast so you can really collect those stems, the branches to use to make your own trellis. If you guys have not seen my episode on how to make a really cheap uh, fast trellis, check out that episode. Wow, the bees are at work right now. These are some Chinese chrysanthemums. I'm sure you guys have seen my Instagram post on that. Really have been enjoying harvesting these for tea. So when I harvest these for tea, I make sure that I don't over harvest because I got to save some for the bees, especially when winter is approaching. There's going to be a lot less, uh, you know, plants and pollen for them. Right above the Chinese chrysanthemum is the calamansi, also known as calamandong, I think it's called. So this is actually called a four season citrus in Chinese because it literally fruits like almost every day of the year. They might have like a couple months break, but it's actually, it's just so delicious. You use it as like a lemon or lime to make lemonade or any sauces. And um, the rind is so thin, it's just so tasty when you blend it. And um, it's just a really lovely uh, fruit that we make tea and all sorts of things with it. Now, if your city has strict rules about growing food outside where it's visible, I would really recommend growing the uh, lemongrass because it looks like an ornamental, but it's usable, it's medicinal, it's great in culinary. And um, this one I planted right out here where it gets full sun right in a corner on the street. So it's just, you know, it's just beautiful. And actually it's put out a lot of puffs all around. I really got to harvest them and I love them in my juices as well. And I got these rosemary, you know, these really hearty ornamental. Also, oh my gosh, it smells so good. Um, also, you can use it in your food. So there's definitely plenty of things that you can grow that you, I think you can get away with because it's not your typical vegetables that you can just easily spot and know that it's food. All right, let's head over the other side and I'll show you a little bit more before we head to the patio. This beautiful taro looking leaf, our elephant ear also, well, it looks like an elephant ear. It's called a baha in Vietnamese. They actually use the stems of these and you can like cut them, uh, slice them thinly and make stir fries or it's really popular in like their uh, fish, sour, spicy soup. So one time one of my mom's friends gave her some that she grew and it was actually the wrong one so when my mom cooked it, it still felt like a thousand needles stabbing in my tongue, in my mouth for hours. So if you guys do grow this for food, be sure you know that you are getting the correct one because a lot of these elephant ear looking plants look so similar. 
This actually really loves where it's at right now. I moved it out from the patio because you can see a little more light and a little more space really allow them to grow bigger leaves. And it's just so beautiful. It's so ornamental. It gives me this like near a pond, a water element kind of a setting. I really love this. It's just so tropical and such a zen look in the garden. And then right behind, oh, this is the tree collared. This thing is massive. I really need to, I think I'm gonna do some cuttings out of these because they grow so fast when it gets a lot of sun. And right now all the cruciferous vegetables taste so much better than in the summer, even though, you know, it provides me with food here year round. And this is the purple tree collard and shout out to uh, one of my uh, subscribers. This original uh, cutting of this stem came from him. So thank you, Neil. This is a purple tree collard. You can see there's so many branches on here. It's leaning and um, if I have all the room in the world, I would just let this go as like a whole corner full of food. That would be awesome. A tree collared forest, I would call it. But you know, um, it's actually shading out some other plants here. I do have to make some cuttings of these and dehydrate them. And these leaves are so thick sometimes besides making like juices or maybe using the tender leaves as wraps. I enjoy them in juices and um, actually making chips because they actually have a really nice crunch with that thickness. This is, this is the tree collard. This is the green variety. You can see that it has grown from my patio and leaning over here and it's just got so many branches out here. The green tree collard has definitely got a lot more tougher, denser, uh, heavier weight to it compared to the purple variety and they both actually has a different kind of a taste. I think the purple one, uh, when I make them as chips, as plain chips, it has a little bit of that onion kind of a, a flavor to it, whereas this one is actually a little more neutral. Yeah, you can see the leaves are like super tough on this one. And it gets this really beautiful, frosty, silvery, kind of a blue hue to it when it gets in full sun exposure out here. All right, now we're gonna head back to the patio section, which is actually more of my private space. As we enter the patio section, you can see that these loofah gourds are drying out, so stay tuned for a harvest video. <laughs> right over here, got some nice ginger growing. It got a little more sun in the beginning of the season and then as the other vines started growing out it actually shaded the plants. It's still doing pretty well. I know that it can get a lot bigger and what I've learned, you know, is that ginger really actually loves the sun but with the dry heat that we get out in Southern California summers, the leaves tend to burn so I know that some people say they love full sun but in the tropics where there's a little more moisture in the air they actually do better otherwise the leaves would just burn up so what I'm learning is that I think it's best to give it as much sunlight as possible but if the leaves starts to burn a little too much then you just move it a little uh, you know lessen that sun exposure a little bit and I think that would just be the sweet spot for going growing ginger so the other day I was pruning back the vines of the loofah so that I can open up a lot more light in here, especially when winter comes to angle shifts and uh, it doesn't get a lot of sun in here. So I'm actually growing more, you know, winter vegetables now I'm getting them started. So they need more light. I pruned it back and I accidentally cut one of the branches and you know the pain if you guys have experienced this accident. And so as I was following that, that stem, that vine, it's actually this little loofah. So at this point, the loofah is very much edible, but because of this, you know, this variety that I'm growing, it's actually different than the kind that a lot of people grow that you guys actually were curious why I was still able to eat them when they're so big. Usually when they get a little big, these loofahs, um, or loofahs in general, would get really fibrous because they're actually mainly grown for using as a sponge, but this one is for edible variety. So this thing can grow a lot larger up to even this size and it will still be edible. So I was a bit bumped out that it's so small and I got it cut, but it's still gonna be really tasty in a dish and um, yeah.
right over in this side. This is really has been one of the most beautiful vegetables I've ever grown. This is that cotote that I've shown you guys. It's grown so much more throughout the warm season. You can see that now it's actually flowering. Now if I was in the tropics or maybe if the weather was more warm or more appropriate for this tropical vegetable, it would have fruited because this is actually considered like a gooseberry. So I've never seen the fruits on on them out here in Southern California. But the flowers are growing these little like flat looking tan yellowish kind of flowers and then when it hits more sun or as the flowers mature throughout you know after it blooms for like a few days it'll start to pick up a little more of that red pink like maroon kind of a pigment in the center it's just so adorable so I just wanted to make sure I show you guys this because I will actually be keeping this tree under some grow lights for the winter time because it is one of the more sensitive vegetables to the cold that I grow. Then right over here, I used to have this in the front. This is the Suriname cherry. If you guys want to know more about this plant or this, this tree, fruit tree, check out my my one of my older episodes on it. This is one of my favorite cherries. It is so flavorful and delicious. Suriname cherry shore fruited right around the right time during autumn when it had all the little like yellow and orange color. It looks like little pumpkins hanging on the tree. And then you can see behind that uh, sweet, uh, what is it called? That is the purple yam. That's the tropical yam. Super high in starch, really, really sticky. Can't wait to harvest these. You can see that I actually have placed two tomato cages, basically inverted them so I can double the height of that large tomato cage. You guys can see down here, these carrots have taken off. You guys have seen one of my recent episodes. I planted the um, daikon. These are the, the Japanese daikon radishes. Now they're already like microgreens and they, do, they definitely need to be thinned out right now. As you can see. Uh, thank you. So yeah, I just basically sewed all these and you can see that now they have grown. Mm. So about a month or two ago, I started some new uh, green beans here that were given from my friend's dad's seeds from these really amazing, tender, prolific green beans. And so here they are. They've actually grown quite a bit out here. They're actually doing even better than the uh, the other set that I planted because this side gets a lot more sun. And I actually extended the trellis here so that it can keep climbing. We'll see how long they got left because we're supposed to get like 39 degrees Fahrenheit uh, low here in the next couple of days. So um, actually, why don't I do some harvest of these green beans? So let's see here. So these green beans are looking so lovely. Cute. Oh my gosh, there's actually some in the back too. Oh, and then right down here, this is the dra dragon tongue bean. These tender green beans are the vine variety, so I've planted them in the back. And in the front of it, this is the bush variety, this is the dragon tongue bean. It's my first time growing these ones and I'm liking them so far. It starts off looking like green beans, just like your regular green beans, but when the weather or that seems like it hits more sun and that it matures more, it starts picking up that beautiful purple pigment like flakes of them on here. They're just so, so gorgeous. Fall is just a really great time to ferment your food, your harvest. So be sure to check out the video. I'll link it down below for you guys. It's super easy to ferment. It's just so important to nourish your, you know, your gut bacteria. And green beans is something I have never tried fermenting, but I can imagine that it would be really tasty. So I think I'm gonna try that. Ashitabas are doing amazing here now that the weather is cooler. And I planted a couple more in between that you guys have seen in my previous episode. And then I got some lettuce down here growing in the front. Sometimes I just love, you know, being able to enjoy like a normal plate of salad with some lettuce or romaines instead of all sorts of like strong tasting medicinal herbs, you know. So I love how lettuce has a nice crispy, delicate texture, but also it's more neutral or more mild, but yet at the same time it's just got all these 
flavors um, when you grow them with lots of different kinds of minerals. A little update for you guys from this tower garden. This is actually hit, well, we've actually got like about 90 or even 92 degrees out here just a couple few days ago and so this uh, lettuce plant here and the highest uh, you know section has uh, you know gotten the most sun so it's actually starting to bolt here but testing out this tower and seeing what kind of plants you know does well here and it seems like it really the lettuces really enjoy being in this tower uh, so are the you know the mustard greens and this red vein sorrel not so much on the daisy not daisies uh, pansies so I might try another t pansy just because the ones I placed in there were in the shade a little too long so they were kind of getting linky but other than that I'm seeing that leafy greens basically are the ones that are doing the most well in this tower. Egyptian spinaches here, the red and the green variety are kind of finishing up but the red ones really loves the heat a lot more than the green therefore it's actually dying out a lot earlier than this green one. This green one here is um, actually still putting out some new growth. Some of the the pods actually ready to be harvested you can tell by kind of just tapping on them and they'll give that shaking like dry you can hear the seeds inside shaking the red variety does do more well in the heat therefore they do die out faster than the green so let me show you guys how the red ones are doing right now this is that red Egyptian spinach like I said most of them are dying out you hear that they're ready to harvest this is that ground cherry that I've been growing. This is my third try, and I guess the third time is a charm. The other two rotted out. So this one actually has grown the most beautiful for me. I'm super excited. They usually grow in the warm season. So even though I'm starting to see them, like they're flowering and they're producing fruits, I don't know if they're gonna be that sweet just because, you know, due to the lack of um, intense sun and the heat. There was some critters I got to them at night, and so I built like this try pod basically so I can put this uh, this netting over it until this plant actually got so much bigger now I actually basically switched it out and built a cage for it super easy and fast to do I will overwinter them with some grow lights in indoors so yes you can actually they grow as a perennial in you know places that don't get too cold so for you guys who have you know colder climates which actually for us, uh, because it's my first time growing it, I don't know how well they'll do in the winter out here, but I do want to keep them pretty, so I'm going to test out growing different plants indoors under grow lights and see how they do. But basically, at places that, like for places that freezes over, people would cut this back and bring it inside so that you, have a, you don't have to grow them from seed every year. I think for a small garden, sometimes you have to Think about the things you want to plant and maybe sacrifice certain uh, varieties or certain types of plants. And for me, I'm growing a lot more uh, beets instead of Swiss chard because I find that the greens of the beets taste, I mean, they're not only edible, but I think, I think the taste is very similar to chard. So instead of growing both, I would just pick to grow the ones that I can eat the leaves and the root vegetable. I do need to thin these out, but they're just looking so lovely. It's hard for me to, you know, thin them. <laughs> One more thing I want to point out to you guys, you were asking about the moringa and I want to point it out to you before it dies back in the winter, it is more sensitive to the cold weather even for uh, zone 10 here. So I basically just kind of cut it back a little bit every you know year and so let them branch out a little more to get a fuller, more bush-like. A uh, fuller tree. Those of you who live in a little colder climates for with not a really uh, long frost time, you can cut it down and just mulch it really heavily. And um, most of the time, they do come back in, you know, uh, in the spring. But it is a really medicinal, full of vitamins. If you guys eat this, this is basically like your multivitamin pill. I know that it is very nutritious, but I really enjoy them cooked more, just because personally. I kind of get that nauseous feeling eating it raw because of that spicy taste, which I actually get at them when I eat like radish, when it's like a raw radish. Why don't, I don't know what that is with me, but it just doesn't agree with me eating the sort of a spicy kind of a, that sort of a flavor. 
Ooh, would you look at this? This is the first sugar snap I'm getting this year. These are the Roselle hibiscus. You guys stay tuned for a harvest episode where I would talk about more about growing this and how to harvest it and prepare it to use. The white bitter melon is finishing up. Thank you, you guys, for joining me on this garden tour. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. And to follow me on Facebook or Instagram where I do some instant updates of my life that you don't get to see on this channel. If you would like to support my work, I really would appreciate it. I'll leave the links down below of ways that you can do that. Also, even by uh, visiting my website at wendyland.com. I'll leave all the information that I just mentioned in this video just in the box below. Thank you so much, you guys. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you back here in the next video. Bye.